All right. Hi, this is Mike Ross, public address announcer for your Toronto Maple Leafs, and this is the Leafs Late Night Podcast, your post-game destination. And now, your starting lineup. Roscoe, the fanalist, Southey, Beaner, and Darty Brodeur on the Leafs Late Night Podcast. Oh, yeah. Down, 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 down. All right, we're back. Welcome to Leafs Late Night, presented by Inside the Rink, where it is never too late for the Leafs. I'm your host, Roscoe, joined by Beaner and Southey. How's it going, guys? It's going. It's going. It's a win. Yeah, it's been uh, been a nice couple games for the Leafs, gotta say. Uh, yep. So we've had a look at uh, Joseph Wall and Ilya Samsonov. We've had a look at, you know, a couple healthy defensemen come back. Not so much of Edmondson, unfortunately, but uh, Marner's back. You know, we're starting to see more of what Game 1's lineup is going to look like. Uh, how's uh, What's the vibe? Do a little quick uh, Leaf vibe check. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good with it so far. Um, I, I like seeing the continuation of some of the play from Burton Dome. Um, Marner coming back. Marner looked great tonight. Oh, yeah. uh, Bro- Brody looked good tonight. And we haven't been able to say that. What his first season with the Leafs? Yeah, it's um, been a while. Yeah, no, it it definitely has been a while. It's it it's good to see, and there hasn't been a, a drastic drop off from anybody else. Like, okay, McMahon's not scoring like he did. He had that hot week where he was basically Matthews. I mean, he scored his season's worth of goals in a span of, like, two and a half weeks. Like, that's what he should have gotten spread out over the season. But shooting percentage is weird that way. (laughs) Yeah, but it's not like he's playing poorly either. He's still getting chances. He's he's actually looked really good on a line with Tavares. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice that we found a couple guys that you can spread out like we've seen in that last game when Marner came back and they're like, let's roll three powerful lines because we can, you know, spread out McMahon and Domi and Bertuzzi and Holmberg. And, yeah. you know, you don't even have Yarncroke back yet. So it, it really has opened up a lot of uh, of offensive power. But uh, yeah, Sunday, how, what's, what's, your, uh, what's your vibe? Oh, we're feeling good. We're 5-1 and one in the last six games. Uh, like Beaner said, Marner looked pretty good tonight, much better than he did his first game back. And to your point, too, we're rolling four good lines now. It seems like everyone knows what the roles are. Uh, when we get Edmondson back on the back end, too, I think we're going to be a little nastier. Uh, Being mentioned earlier, too, we can give Gio a rest here and there because as good as he is, he can be pretty bad if he's playing consecutive nights for a while. So if we can just limit his minutes, that'll help us a lot. And I think the biggest takeaway is just Samsonov. He's oh yeah, like so reliable right now. If you told us this in November or December... No one would believe you, but look at it now. Like he's just—I don't even think it's a question who starts game one. Well, and I mean, really, you got to put it in the context of Jack Campbell had just been sent down for this conditioning stint, and it did not go well at all. And almost immediately yeah. after, the Leafs tried to run the same thing with Samsonov, but do it differently. And holy shit, whatever they did different than Edmonton did had paid off tenfold because this guy came back to form and better like he i don't think i've ever seen him this comfortable in his own net like the only things that i can fault like the the goals he's let in are are like crazy tips or the defense just leaving him out to dry or like tonight when o'connor was left literally behind two defensemen and samsonov standing in the net so like i can't fault him he's made some fantastic saves he has made some fantastic saves and like what the Leafs did differently is they used their resources the way you would want a team like Toronto to use their resources. Like the big flex everybody tried to pull against the Leafs in the Dubas era was old. Oh, you know, the players are too soft. They have everything too good. You know, they don't have to work for anything. Everything's given to them on a golden platter. It's like, yeah, no shit. You want to be able to treat your employees res- like with respect, right? <laughs> You won't let so, us spend our money on players, so yeah, we're going to spend it on a fucking staff. <laughs> yeah, Batman can't screw us over with this yet. Marty and I yes. went down a rabbit hole tonight, but we can get into that later. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> they try. This whole shit about not being able to fly players in in the offseason, like, they do everything they can. Yeah, but but no, it's it, it's, it deserves a lot of respect and, and you know, a, an applause to the organization for the fact that they... They didn't just send him down and okay, go figure out your shit. It's 
we're putting you on waivers for roster purposes, but you're not going anywhere. You're staying here and we're going to figure this out. Whatever you need, you have. Doctors, therapists, Mm -hmm. family time, whatever, whatever you need, you have it. Let's figure this out. And clearly it's worked. Yeah, the fun thing about waivers in this cap-strapped era is if the player makes over like a million and a half, nobody's claiming them because no one can fit them. <laughs> like anytime you see somebody over, I'd say like over two million, it's like, ah, they're clearing. This is just a, a conditioning stint. Yeah, but no, if it's not close to trade deadline or something, then it's, unless you're, you know, your GM is Kyle Dubas, you should be pretty safe. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and we get another W over Dubas tonight. And I mean, so you mentioned you can run four lines, and that's something I didn't really uh, touch on. So we've got three powerful offensive lines, as they showed. But oh my God, Ryan Reeves in the last two weeks has just like awoken and is taking on every single person that bats the wrong eye at him. He's pushing his way to the front of the net. The dude's like still deking people out like i can't believe the moves he's trying to pull off like he's got the confidence to at least attempt them he doesn't pull it off most of the time but there's times where he's like floating around looking like marner on that fourth line it's crazy (laughs) so what's the the metal that wolverine has in his body did we like inject some of that into this guy's knees so he could stand up or something like (laughs) yeah because all of a sudden he's like he's not afraid he had that first couple weeks of the season where you know he looked yeah. like ryan reeves what everybody would have expected and then he went downhill really really fast and clearly he was in some sort of pain because he mm-hmm. was out for a while and the comments about his knees blah 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 but since he's been back like something he, changed even like now compared to the beginning of the season he looks like 2017 18 reeves right now like he's skating way faster to johnny's point like he's playing good offense he knows his role defensively too but it's the little things he's doing too. Like he's always picking up his guy. He's winning his battles along the boards. He's keeping his shift short. Like he's an exemplary fourth line player right now. He's oh, won he... skating races. Yeah. Who did he punch in the side of the head and absolutely <laughs> demolish the other night? Tanner Janot. Right. Oh! Janot. <laughs> Who ended up missing the next game? Oh shit. I got a, I got a thing Cue for it this. Up, boys. Turn. Oh my god. I'm so excited. Na, na, na. Oh my god, that's really back. How's it going, Daddy O? Oh, you're oh, where's, muted. Where's my oh. audio? Where's my audio? There we go. Can you, can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry. Yeah, I was trying to figure out my audio. It went, it went all funky for a second. But uh, uh, where do where do I begin? What was your question? <laughs> the floor oh, is yours, buddy. Talk, talking about it's literally just been a vibe check. How are we feeling right now about the team? So literally, whatever you want. Ah, oh, so I've, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm the world's worst sleeps pundit because I have not been <laughs> paying too much attention. But again, because like. How it's garbage like, time. Yeah, like I'm not gonna lie, lie to you. Like my investment in the, was it was entirely in the past six years. So every year since like post COVID has been like, you know, I know they can do it. Let's just get to the playoffs. So I'm apologizing to all the fans. I'm a phony Leafs fan right now, but in my head, <laughs> I just don't care. I do not care about the Leafs because it's just like we have taken them for granted how good they are, and I feel like they they themselves have taken themselves for granted these opportunities. So it's like. I don't care. Bring me to the playoffs. Get me to the Stanley Cup Finals. It's just it's it sucks that that's my mindset because it wasn't that way before. Like I would say, like when the Leafs were really kind of like weird in that 2015, 2016 era. That's kind of when I was like, oh my god, you know, th- things could happen. Then Tavares comes, like, oh my god, like big things are moving. But now it's just like, okay, okay, like, but have you have you won anything yet? So. <laughs> You've committed to what a lot of fans say at the end of every playoffs loss, where it's, I'm not watching the regular season. I'll just wait for the playoffs. And I got to give it to you. Not, not many people actually <laughs> stick to their word on that. So um, I guess kudos to you for, for uh, sticking to your word there. Well, I'm not going to lie to the fans here. Right? I got to tell you, tell you the truth. And But the truth is, is that this season has been kind of an anomaly. Like right? we've seen so many things that, we wouldn't expect the Leafs to do and pull themselves out of and accomplish. And, you know, there were failures along the way, but I don't know, like a couple of days ago, what was it? 
maybe a week ago, sorry, trying to catch up with the timeline, but it was like these guys were giving up their position for a while. They were, they were chasing the wild card, if you will, right? So, so, so it's like, it's crazy that the Leafs can be so leafy, but at the same time, like, they are exactly what they we expect them to be, right? So, Yeah, things get hairy at the same time every year. It's that February, March, where it's like, uh, we know we're in second or third place. We know it's going to be Tampa, Florida, Boston. Like, uh, people are getting hurt now. It's always the same time when everyone starts getting hurt. And it's just, I feel like the team just kind of, it, it's hard to watch because it's never the, the complete team that you're going to see in the playoffs like for the last month we haven't really seen the this full healthy lineup so uh you know i i, I don't blame you i mean i i've missed a couple games here and there for work but yeah it's been Did a I... lot of um just cheering for individual achievements more than than um and and i guess looking for improvements around the team which is what we've been talking about like with Dirty. and with samsonov uh, go ahead bean you 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 t- doing that little spiel there just reminded me of Dennis Green from all the Sports Center clips, the former Cardinals head coach. They are who we thought they were. <laughs> <laughs> we let them off. The I don't, where do you think I stole that from? I, I've heard it so many times. They, they use they use it so many times that like I you know some some phrases just become uh, you know you, you put them in the copy paste folder just so when you're you run out of ideas. But uh, you know what? It's just it's it's so weird too with these Leafs, right? Because like I'll I'll zone in, I'll zoom in, zoom in and out. You know, like just trying to figure out what the heck's going on here, and uh, it's like at one point in this season it was over for Ryan Reeves, and now has he not caved into people's faces in the past week? <laughs> like Man, that's what we were just like, talking about. Yeah, like what? As I said, like if we flash back to like when I, the last time I was on this podcast, that guy was basically on the train to Robodaw Island, and now he's literally caved in. Like he's won some fights, like like you know. They weren't just like by you know by decision. These, these were, the, the decision was that this guy beat the shit out of you. That was that was what was decided. The, yeah, the decision was really Tanner Janot missed the next game. Like, and oh, didn't yeah. we have an entire conversation like years ago about like I remember I was like, who the hell is Tanner Janot? And you guys were like, oh my god, he's a great fighter. Well, clearly not because Ryan Reeves, old man. <laughs> Old old man Reeves caved his face in. So <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, Tanner. You know, I don't, I don't want to shit on you too much. But I, d- I do remember saying that, right? Like, like almost a year ago to the to the day we said, I, I said, like, who the hell is Tanner? You know, and you guys were like, blah 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 blah. But now it's like, who the hell is Tanner? You know, uh, some guy in a stretcher right now. <laughs> you got absolutely bottom <laughs> draw. Yeah, watching him, like, and we were saying, you know, it's it's the confidence to take on these fights and to, to make plays that he wasn't before. Like, something definitely happened with him early on where he, you know, he started the season the first couple of games trying to go for it, and then it just disappeared. Like, he, all the gas in the tank was just gone. So I'm glad he's been able to find it because we, <laughs> we're stuck with him for two more years, for better or worse. The better or for worse. I mean, you know, trades are a thing. Better but... for now. Better for now. We'll put it that way. I'm just trying to pull up. It's really hard to find who's leading the league in hits. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's not an easy <laughs> stat to find. NHL stats, like, on their website are really annoying. What I'm trying to find is where Simon Benoit sits. Because the stat that I found recently, like, I'd say like a week ago, was that this guy is, like, 14th in the league in hits and has played 20 less games than everybody else on the list. <laughs> It's pretty wild, and that's uh, that's something that's a it's huge like shift from last year. From Nashville, three hundred and sixty hits. Yeah, and Benoit's got like two hundred and seventy or something in like a shit ton less games. The guys, if you look at him on fantasy, he's averaging like seven to ten hits a game. Like this is <laughs> not something that we've had. And then it just it it's. And I'm not trying to put it on one person. It's just like this physical confidence to take somebody on. Like this is what we were saying last uh, in the off season when we first picked these guys up. It's like knowing that this guy's behind you and can back you up is going to give the guys the the confidence to use their strength to throw hits around and not worry about the consequences. But it seems like that took until like the end of March to take effect. And I'm glad it's happening. Because uh, this is this team has been sticking up for each other. Matthews absolutely demolished Crosby tonight. Like these guys are he really it using that. it. <laughs> yeah, tell- the accident. He lined that up for like five seconds. Like you could see him look at him, and I go and doink. <laughs> yeah, Matthews is a small guy too. Like if he throws around his body, you're gonna feel it. Oh, but uh, actually, I do want to. 
kind of use that as a little transition. Um, I don't know if you guys all caught all of the game tonight, but uh, what's up with Crosby getting whistles for like potentially being hurt? That was weird. It's like a flashback to his rookie season. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, he's, what, 36, 37? And, oh, no, like, I understand if people potentially have gotten a head injury and, like, he's got a long history of concussions, so I I, I get it. But these were not, you know, uh, it was just a big hit. It seemed like he called the penalty, the the would-be penalty, too. Like, he got the ref's attention, and they blew it down, and they reviewed it. Luckily, it wasn't a penalty, but I don't know. Like, he's... One of the greatest of all times. He's going to get those type of calls, but to see him kind of complaining like that, yeah, it does bring us back to his first two seasons. I liked that it almost looked like the refs got one back on him because I forget who it was on the Leafs was falling as Crosby was entering the zone. He batted it with his hand, and they called it a hand pass. Oh, yeah. Which, like, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not a hand pass, but it goes to the other team, is it? No. No. So I don't understand. I don't know why they called it that. So he immediately started screaming at the refs, like, how is this a hand pass? I was I going too, to like, the These zone. guys are playing for their playoff lives. They can't afford to leave points on the table. But yeah, he got oh, no, so it was nice that. Waited. Yeah, exactly. It was nice that, you know, we had a play called dead for absolutely no reason. And then Crosby gets one right back the next period. So karma's a biatch, boy. Honestly, if there's one thing that I don't know if I appreciate about the NHL over other sports, um, in particular the NBA, is that like we're definitely sticklers for the rules and like um, like movement movement type rules because um, like I don't know what's you know it's probably been this way for a while now, but I tried watching like basketball recently and uh, like I just know that there's just like on on any on any given play in basketball, it's like, if you're a star, like you, you can travel with the ball. Essentially. I was just going to say, they don't yeah. call traveling anymore. They don't call they traveling. Like four steps. Or it's like crazy. any, crazy. Or any sort of like, um, it's just see, see, like, there's some, there's some people who can get away with, I don't know what the basketball term for like, you know, roughing or pushing someone is, or like getting really up to someone, but it seems that like there's some people who can just get away with it constantly. Whereas like, I feel like back in the day, like, you know, you just, you could, you would see it called more. I don't know. <laughs> A lot of double dribbling too. Like yeah. guys will just like, like under no pressure, they'll be dribbling. And they'll stop for a sec and like point to guys like where to go and then just start dribbling again. It's like, what? You can't do that. Whereas like but, I said, in, <laughs> go for it. Go. No, no, but it's like, it's never, a lot of the time it's when they're not under pressure. So it's like the rules, uh, we're not going to call it here and be sticklers about it. But like to your point, you know, the, the NHL is sticklers about their rules across the board. It doesn't matter what the context is. It's, it's pretty much always called. It's like icing has been aggressively like icing and fucking uh, offsides has been aggressively offsides and we're still having that debate, but we're, we've never just let it like kind of slide. You know what I mean? Whereas with basketball, it's like there's clearly flagrant, you know, um, you know, double dribbling and, and uh, traveling happening all the time and no one cares. Like imagine, imagine. They're not going to video <laughs> review, right? Yeah. Like imagine, imagine like, you know, if, if McDavid could just get away with, you know, um, offsides all the time and, but you know, some, some random couldn't, you know what I mean? Whereas that, that would not happen, right? It's going to be called on McDavid, let alone on, you know, I can't even think of a random. (laughs) So I guess, but I mean, to kind of bring the point together, like, does it benefit or hinder your sport? Because I mean, look at where the NBA is and where their stars are at and how much they control their teams and the end control the game. You know, it's kind of a trade-off. Like the sport is probably doing, uh, I mean, not probably, the sport is doing better financially, the league. And their stars are making a lot more money, but you know, it's they're kind of handcuffed. Like they can pick where they go. So, do you want that kind of vibe in the NHL, or I don't know? I I don't feel like there's a happy medium. It's, it seems like it's one or the other. Because like Steph Curry could take four steps back to like line himself up for a shot, and they they've found ways to argue it. But like I said, McDavid said if he doesn't have that puck perfectly in control, it's an offsides, right? But if the rules were applied, if Steph Curry rules were applied to McDavid, that you know how many fucking goals McDavid would have already, <laughs> and Matthews well, yeah. too. It's happened to the Leafs as well, right? So, well, yeah, I mean we've seen him get called for offsides when he's carrying the puck across the line. It's like he's in control of it, but it wasn't on his stick. I mean, it's yeah, it's just kind of the game. It's a pain in the ass, but it is the game we set up for, I guess. Um, okay, so this team, I know we kind of touched on Samsonov, but um, Joseph Wall is at the moment our backup goalie. Uh, this is going to be potentially a seven-game series. How do we feel about him getting 
you know, game time in the playoffs. Like he's been a little ass since he came back. Banner, what do you, uh, what's your vibe on him? I, I'm fine with it. Um, those type of injuries for goalies are difficult to come back from. Um, anything lower body, like that's your whole foundation in the net, right? Push off, positioning, everything. And there's been a couple times where he'll go to push off or even just go down. And he's not that he's hesitant, but he doesn't have 100% confidence in his body right now because he hasn't got the minutes, the reps to to get back in there. Like, you know, yeah, I'm good. This time of year, practices get canceled. Morning skates become optional as you're trying to rest guys and have everybody's bumps and bruises go from, you know, potentially you might have to sit a game or not play your best to, okay, yeah, this is just an everyday thing. So I'm fine. We can go. So I think as we get closer and like, as we get closer and closer, he, you need the repetition, you need the movement to build that confidence back up in your body. Yeah. I mean, like we saw him let in, a pretty meh five hole goal. And it's, it's like you're saying, it's that confidence and I guess the sureness that you're not going to hurt yourself again, like to drop down like that. I mean, we saw Sammy do it multiple times tonight. So he's, you know, he's feeling good and it's not like, I know I'm going to re agitate this injury. So yeah, without the reps, like, well, not going to get comfortable again and know that he can make those kind of moves. Yeah, it wasn't near as bad as the five hole goal I let in last night, so it's okay. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Tell us. Envision you're playing Chell and someone's being the goalie and the controller dies as someone takes a shot oh, at you. Oh god. Like I legitimately <laughs> didn't move. I, I oh. saw it. It was a clear shot. I legitimately didn't move. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> oh no. Just thought yeah. you was just stick there or what? <laughs> No, like I, I just, I, I froze. It, oh. I, I have no idea why it wasn't that hard of a shot. I just legitimately batteries disconnected and had to reconnect the controller. Oh shit! <laughs> Be- Bean was like loading like my my internet uh, back home. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay, so Matthews sixty five goals tonight. So uh, we had a question that I'll just uh, wrap into this discussion that we're gonna have here all in uh, this game by the way 65 goals <laughs> all yes, the in, <laughs> unbelievable performance tonight from austin 65 to 2 the leafs won uh in overtime so this is from the rabbit of carabinog at neutron liam i think it's the rabbit from uh monty python the holy grail <laughs> the little white one so <laughs> sorry i just find that really funny he's got a blue check mark too <laughs> it's like okay my only question is it realistic to expect 70 goals from austin matthews so how many games we got left here uh we should have five left five five goals in five games what do we think it's doable it's it's he's he's shown us it's doable right like it's he could but he's also shown us that he could not score for the last five games of the season like he's been a little streaky so it, it could be five goals in five games. It could be none. So I, I think it, I'm going with one or the other. He's either hitting 70 or he's staying at 65. I don't, think, I don't think there's a medium here. No, if he doesn't get 70, he's getting stuck on 67. I've already decided that. 60. Oh, no, you're right. <laughs> That's 67. Damn it. Put God the money down on it now. Yeah. If you haven't already. It's just going to happen because that's the team we cheer for. <laughs> it's like five that number goals. just works its way in. Ugh. Five goals for $5. That's be, that'd be nice. A dollar a goal. Let's do it. Come on. Speaking of, do you see Subway's doing uh, six inches for six bucks? That's what I was thinking of. As soon as like, I came up with that like weird, stupid quip in my head, I was like, five, five goal or foot longs? What is this? That sounds more <laughs> sus than I was expecting it to be. But, <laughs> but you but know, like, like that. <laughs> think of the inflation on that for a second a five dollar foot long to a six inches for six dollars that's like more than double 
but and I you mean, know you're not getting that extra inch. There's a guy that literally, you know, <laughs> pun intended, I guess. But there's a guy that actually measured, and they've been sued several times because they've been cheap. They've been cheaping out on inches. They've only Subway's been claiming that they're 12 inches, and then they're only giving out 10 or 11. <laughs> okay, and here's the other thing: like, how much do you trust this sandwich artist to cut exactly down the center of a what I'm assuming is a un when unbaked exactly 12 inch long sub like if it shrinks down to like 11.3 when you bake it and then they're not perfectly in the center yeah you're getting like a five inch sub like that's how easy it is for this to happen man you, said, <laughs> Johnny, just, you, you, you know what they're opening in your life <laughs> himself yes. i made <laughs> shush shush i i made a focaccia a couple weeks ago and it turned out lovely so don't even at me with that um <laughs> now i don't remember what i was gonna say speaking Oops. of 65 goals how many players do you think in the history of the league have done that in the history of the league yeah um is like, it under 10 i'm gonna say, no no okay i'm so gonna it's... say like 28 there's been 25, oh. 65, 65 or, or more goal seasons, but only 13 players have done it. Oh, whoa. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. But, but Bean, how many of those players have played in the past two decades? Haha. Um, this is what we were talking about before. We... <laughs> this leads to a funnier point. Squid Four. Pro Row. Four. See, there you go. So I knew it was under five because in my head, I'm not, I'm not thinking about guys who played on goaltenders who strapped, you know, bags of uh, lettuce on their legs and started playing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, yes. Peter, what, what was that stat about? Sorry, you go on and then we got to get that Leafs one. Oh, no, I was just going to say you have Stevie Y, Ovechkin, Matthews, um, and Lemieux are the only ones that have played in the last 20 years. Wow. And that makes it all the more impressive, right? Because then we, when we're talking about the last 10 years, it breaks it down to two, I believe, right? Unless. Yeah, Ovi's was. Actually, Ovi's was over 10 years ago. That's crazy. So so we're saying is, that just leaves Matthews then? Or am I, like, am I missing someone here? In the last 10 years to get 65, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's insane. And especially because you're, 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 you know, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, you know, I already mentioned today, McDavid, right? It's just weird to think that he hasn't hit that goal yet. Yeah, I mean, well, last... him, and, him and Dry are pretty good about like splitting all of the Goiler, the Oilers goals, the Goilers, <laughs> the Oilers goals 50 50. So, eh. well, McDavid had his goal year last year where he's like, okay, you guys think I can't score? I'll score. And he got 64. So he was oh, okay, right that's pretty, there. That's pretty damn close. <laughs> Um, but I, I was dirty before you came on. I was talking to Southey and Roscoe in the entire history of the Leafs. There's been 600 point seasons. And Matthews now has two of them. How wild is that? That a third of the Leafs hundred point seasons have been in the last, what, two years, three years, two years, two years. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what got me into like, I guess got me back into hockey was looking up like hockey history and stuff. And, and what really, when I really started focusing on the Leafs uh, in the past, well, it seems like I was gonna say five years, but seriously, it's been 10 years now that I've actually cared about the Leafs and uh, you know, with an adult level of passion rather than a childlike sense of wonder. And it's like, it's, it was crazy to actually look back and like talking with, you know, older folks and talking with people who've been watching this, watching this team since hell, there's been people, I've been talking to people who've watching this team since like, you know, they're no longer with us anymore. Right. And it's like, to actually look at those those real concrete stats and realize that like you know we're not I'm not saying the team has been has always been mediocre because we had some amazing players come through here but it was just astonishing how long um since like the original six era that the Leafs it took for like you know it took Austin Matthews to start breaking original six Leaf records you know what I mean like that's just insane considering the Leafs have always been considered um you know one of the more if not elite teams at least one of the you know one of the most expensive teams. <laughs> well, one of the things with the Leafs, and it, it's kind of always been their identity, not that they haven't had good players, but they've always been more of like a team, like a hardworking, 
will beat you together instead of, you know, relying on one guy. Like even, even in their heyday, a team made up of players that were good eight years ago. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's the early thousands. They just wanted to sell jerseys or jerseys. Um, like it's okay. We're all having uh, speech impediments here with the Goilers. Right. (laughs) Um, apparently in Southern Alberta, they call the Oilers, the Coilers anyways. So it's all good. Um, (laughs) that's where I'm at right now. So (laughs) nice. Um, but like you had you had great players Dave Keon, Frank Mahovlich, you going to the seventies, you had Daryl Sittler, McDonald, and Salmon, but you never had that that superstar, you know, top three, four player in the league. You had really, really good players, but it was more of a by committee approach. You never and had then, a Hall or a Bossy or a LaFleur. Like even, yeah, even when we had Sundin. Okay, yeah, Sundin was one of the better players in the NHL. But he wasn't top ten. You could look at Gilmore. He's probably the only right? one before Matthews. He yeah, Gilmore with when he first came over, he was the one. Like he was Hart Trophy nominations and yeah. he put the team on his back. But like even when we won all the cups, it wasn't any one player. It was more of a team. I guess the only worry I have is that like there's a player you didn't even mention in that list, and that's Rick Vive, and that's because he didn't fucking win anything, and the team sucked when they had him. So I just I hope that they can do something while they have this many good players and not just Matthews, and uh, and you know give these guys a, a proper legacy instead of just another couple guys that yeah they scored a bunch of goals but they didn't win. Well, it's like I always like to co- like compare the Leafs um, to the Dallas Cowboys, but I feel like that's a very current comparison. I would say that for the longest time, the Leafs were kind of more like the New York Knicks, right? Like they are a team that essentially had money, but for some reason, nobody, nobody's just never been good and nobody wants to play for them. (laughs) And it's like only recently that they end up getting this, like, you know, Stephen A. Smith, though I said it before Stephen A. Uh, I'll put my money on that, is that the, the Leafs are now the Dallas Cowboys in the NHL because not, they do have the star power. They do have the flair. They do have the, you know, the corny level of optimism and then the absolute bust at the end. But it's, we just, like I said, we just need to get to that point where the Leafs become not just the Leafs, I guess, but because, but they become more of like a, you know, a dynasty team, like, you know, the Red Wings or the, the Patriots or the, you know, that's where we, we need that. Like it's, if we're an original six team, we 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 have some of the most amazing players on the planet now, which is incredible considering our past. It's like it's time for the it's time for the dynasty Leafs, you know, and not just the the Knickerbockers Leafs or the or the you know Cowboys Leafs. Yeah, and uh, look, this is a different built team than we've seen before. We're going into a uh, round one after we finished round one last time, like we've gotten over that hump and put together mm-hmm. a, a gritty team. Like I think if anything is going to be a little different, it's going to be this year versus the last six. So I don't know. I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm just cautiously optimistic <laughs> as a Leafs fan should be, you know, I just, I really I'm felt like last Leafs year. <laughs> I just really feel like last year when, uh, when the Leafs won that first round, it really, truly, and I, and I like felt it like the second they won too. It really felt like that scene in Lord of the Rings where, <laughs> where they're just, like Rojas just like we saved the city. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of, the next group all comes. Of, all of a sudden, they turn around. It's the the fucking elephants. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that's that's gonna be. It feels like the dressing room is sure. different this time, though, right? Like with Domi. Uh, for two especially like it's yeah. I don't know. they have the whole pledge thing they talked about too like it seems if they're gonna do it it has it's gonna be this year otherwise I don't know. yeah and i mean the way they've Cr- taken in the new guys like mcmahon and uh and holmberg like Edmondson, they've treated a, them like they're they're part of the a court, cup right? winner bertuzzi this yeah. guy is a playoff performer he's a warrior cross checking with Edmondson. yo god i love it man finally it's not against us and I don't think in my lifetime, well, actually, we, we mentioned it. Hal Gill's probably the last time we've had somebody this massive in a Leafs jersey on defense. <laughs> like, the dude's so huge. I'm not used to seeing, like, when he comes on the ice, I was like, holy yeah, shit, this he's dude's tall. Too. Yeah. And honestly, we need him back after tonight. Like I was saying, where, you know, you, you can't have a guy behind your goalie and behind both your defensemen, like, standing in the net. And I don't think that happens when Edmondson's yeah. on the ice. 
It's a playoff thing too. Like if you're chipping the puck in his corner, you're by game three or four, you're gonna be looking over your shoulder so much. Like you're you're gonna be tired of his stick going into your back. And it's a, it's gonna wear on players, especially like the later on uh the later we go into the series. Yeah, that's actually interesting because we've never had guys that try to get away with anything. Right, like I think this time it's going to be a couple guys that are going to get a you know a, a cross check or a board or a trip oh, yeah. here or there that doesn't get called, and you know we haven't had guys even attempt for that before. That was kind of the problem was we were getting no, out we mo- have, and we got called. But yeah, was... No, but it's Michael Bunting. They got sent to the count. office right away. Cadre. They got suspended. As and Bunting don't count because they are like the biggest target in the entire I, league. You can't I agree have with one that's what guy going to get it. it. You have we to don't do have, it we never had it on the back end. Like we never had someone who could punish the other team's forwards, you know, for five, six, seven games. That's exactly that's something we've seriously, seriously lacked. Yeah, well, our guys are getting demolished in the offensive yeah. zone and like no calls for it. All night we're screaming that, you know, Matthews is getting slashed at and nothing's happening, or Marta gets tripped on a breakout and nothing happens. But you know, in our end, it's just people walk in. So I think it's gonna be a lot different this year, especially with like you said, if Brody keeps this up, he really stepped up. Uh, McCabe, fantastic tonight with the uh, even with the OT winner. Um, and you've got Benoit, you've got Edmondson. I think it's it's going to be different. It's just a matter of who you run each night. And I think the fact that it's not just one defenseman who's going to punish mm-hmm. them, you can you can kind of rotate them in and out. Yeah. <clears throat> and and uh, riddle me this because I have been missing out on looking at the. Uh minute details of the Leafs bench and their lines. So I was looking at their their what they posted as their combinations tonight. And uh have they always been this mixed? Like we're looking at Matthews, Bertuzzi, Domi, McMahon, Tavares, Marner, Dot Nyes, Holmberg, Nylander. Like that's, that's just, like the last crea- two games since Marner's been back, they've been running this. Yeah. And and yeah, the- well sorry. Um when Marner went down, that kind of forced Keefe's hand a bit, and he played around trying to find a good fit with Matthews, and then Domi and Bert up there just kind of clicked. Those three were starting to gel really well, and then it gave him some flexibility to find a couple guys with JT. Uh, McMahon's been working great with JT. We touched on that earlier, I think, before you got on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I see Bertuzzi, Matthews, and Domi, and it's just like there's just a lot of, like, Weird, strange energy on that line. It kind of makes me think of like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Three completely different dudes. <laughs> like one's some... the leader, the wild card, and then the uh, what do you? What's the other one? <laughs> Is it the brains? I don't know. I've, I I honestly don't remember enough to know. This we're all weird looking and it's like strange. And they lived in a cul de sac, but <laughs> but I just like just like the oddness of seeing that line, right? Because and, and the fact that I do realize that it has been doing quite well. Or well enough, right? Like that's the thing is you don't need to blow out every every team every time you see them, but you need to win games, right? Doesn't matter how you do it, you got to win. We won tonight, and uh, it's also too seeing people who are not necessarily first, second, or third liners scoring too as well, right? Like um, what was it the a few nights ago, probably weeks ago now, because time has been flying for me. But like I'm pretty sure there was one game where I saw um, was it was it McMahon or um, uh, somebody like so, so one of these random guys like on the Leafs was just. Uh, but two of them actually scored like two goals each, like a pair of goals each, and it was like, and 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 the, that game too. I can't, yeah. I can't remember which game, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he won a big on, for a while. Yeah, how many three on ones did they have that one game? I'm sure it's bit like it's crazy. You never see the Leafs do stuff like that. So it's just, I said, even though the kind of the results have been the same this season in the sense that we're not like necessarily number one here, like it's still, it still gives me optimism and hope that like the Leafs can surprise us with you know. And, and, you know, surprising is what you want from the Leafs, right? Because some the same old, same old is how other teams beat them, right? But you, you show up with a bag of surprises, all of a sudden you keep, you, you put these guys off off guard, right? And then that's how you, honestly, that's how you win, win a playoff series. Yeah, and like to your point, um, earlier in the season, secondary <laughs> scoring was a huge, huge issue for the team. We were getting none whatsoever. And since the lines have changed, that has totally done a winning. Like this secondary scoring, third, uh, tertiary scoring is been like a massive part of this turnaround for them that and sammy yeah so i did want to pull that game up because i i remember the one you're talking about here so it was against the oilers when they won 6-3 march 23rd so it was like two and a half weeks ago pontus holmberg and bobby mcmahon each had two goals i'm glad i got one name right (laughs) yeah so i mean that's that's taken a while i mean there was a stretch where it was 
pretty much just the core four scoring and it was getting a little concerning yeah. but uh everybody else i mean look marner going down was bad for the team's points but good for everybody getting a chance to uh to find new partners because i think it was getting a little stale and as much as i hate keith throwing the lines into a blender in april <laughs> again yeah um, but this time it's a little bit more acceptable because he had no choice whereas yeah. before it was like are you dense <laughs> no he was just panicking and like yeah. questioning his last like 75 games of decisions like it was oh my god it was so painful to watch but uh this is yeah like like you said his hand was forced so it, it opened up some opportunities and you know we're benefiting is that, from it is that supposed to be yeah. Tavares beside you uh johnny it is it kind of looks like uh, Lil Dicky. <laughs> it does like, look like Lil Dicky. And he's like, got what is Dave doing over there? He's got an A instead of a C. I have a couple, like, kind of dated Leafs things that have the wrong numbers. Like, my Nylander has the wrong number. Yeah, I gifted somebody a That's 20, fun. I think it was like 27 Nylander jersey. I kind of yeah, got like, 29? 29. 29. There you go, yeah. Yeah, this one's 29. Sweet. You should just you know, need yeah. Pavel. put Podfe on there. You need the Pavel Kubina number thirty-one jersey. Oh, buddy! What a wasn't wasn't that boy uh, Toscala's jersey like a seventy or something, or one of those higher numbers? Because I remember remember somebody I knew had one yeah. way back in the day. It just seemed Ta- weird. Toscala was thirty-five, Thir- but Gustafson was fifty. That's probably who you're thinking of, the monster Jonas. Oh yeah, yeah. He was. was he thirty-five or thirty-seven? Toscala oh, was, was thirty-five. Tre- yeah. Trevor Kidd was thirty-seven. Thir- yeah. yeah. <laughs> You fucking... Oh, okay, so uh, I got a question here. I don't know if you guys caught this. It wasn't after this game. It was after the last one on Saturday. Um, do any of you guys, like, after the Leaf game is done, and, you know, it switches, okay, now we're going to go to Ottawa. Did yeah. you catch the Ottawa-Carolina game there at the end? I just... Was that the one where the guy put in, like, the soft goal at the end, and then <sighs> yeah. uh, did Kachuk, like... It was soft because he didn't do it. He literally just, like, kind of tapped it in, like, hey, hey, and then... Kachuk came after him. I don't think it was just about the goal, though. I think Kachuk was just pissed off about how shit his team is. Yeah, but they were all talking shit about Riley yeah. getting upset over Especially Ridley Greg, Kachuk. and then that happens. Like, so shout out quick for Benito the Basset Hound who uh, who pointed this one out and asked if we saw it. I guess we all did. This was of course we all did. If you didn't, he sure was skating towards the net, and in my opinion, was like kind of already at the open net when the buzzer went and would have had to go out of his way to not put it in the net. Yeah, he like, didn't shoot it. He didn't shoot it. He would just, like, guided it in as the buzzer went, and it's like, it went, and he's like, oh, whatever. I'm here. Like, he would have had to purposefully put it around the net and not score. And what's after, he going to do? Take it home? <laughs> oh, man. After Sans Twitter is losing their mind. Bullshit. Oh, my God, I can't believe them. They're the biggest fucking hypocrites. <laughs> Such a fucking hypocrite. You think this is equivalent or even close to just, like, ripping a slap shot on an open net? Their big argument is that the game was over. But like you said, he didn't Barely. shoot it. He just kind of let the puck keep sliding into the net. Yeah, and it's like, there's no goalie in the net. Like, it's after the... like. If there was a goalie in that, he put it through the goalie's legs after the buzzer went. Hundred percent, jump the totally guy. offside. Yeah, there's no what like like I said, he would have had to stick handle around the net. Like, what are you fucking asking? This is so <laughs> stupid. This team sucks, and they're just taking it out on everybody else. What their last couple games have been brutal. Like they didn't score oh, a yeah. goal for a long time. They just lost. What was it? Six nothing, terrible. and. Oh, that one. You're bad, and you should feel bad for it. <laughs> yeah, like they're just. And of course, the Panthers apart. have to play the next game. Like, oh, chalk that one up as a W for Florida. The move yeah. to the LeBreton Flats cannot come soon enough. Amen. Oh my god, I know. I can see it from my window right here. <laughs> <laughs> so you could spit to the LeBreton Flats. <laughs> you guys Property catch values uh, in them. Woo. Did you guys catch the the Rangers Devils line brawl before the game started? Old time hockey, I get you sure. Two seconds in, yeah, it was like immediate Oops. puck drop, five on five fight, and then uh, somebody Dawson Mercer I think got tossed like two minutes later. Um, I think the some... stat on Adrian Rempe though was like he's played four games against the Devils, and I think he spent five minutes on the ice and forty seven in the penalty box. Like, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's insane. This guy, and people are calling like two sides of this. One, this is fucking old time hockey, and two, this guy's gonna get kicked out of the league. This guy's a nuisance. Yeah, like I, I feel like before, like before his first game, he was he was like like just crushing the Probert uh, story or something because like it just he came into the league and like he, like I don't know if he was also maybe like influenced Banging by his our poet our, mom. Oh yeah, I don't know. Maybe that, that would that would explain a lot. Being, well, you said Arbor, like yeah, but I'm just saying, like like maybe like maybe, maybe Arbor, you know, Arbor Jigai or whatever his name is, Arbor okay. <laughs> Arbor Computer Noises. Um, like like I'm just trying to figure out like what made this guy think that like I guess I guess because of like guys like Arbor that it's like like a lot of the young guys who may not be necessarily completely skills oriented think that crunching a bunch of noses is the way to get their name recognized right because it's still legal in the game it's like an 80s so, 90s yeah. thing that's the only way certain players were ever going to make the nhl and they were told that too and i'm sure this guy is just using that throwback as a template for his nhl journey yeah now. look i think these guys see a gap right like as much as we try to push out certain styles of players every time we pick something as the you know, oh, we're going to go all small, fast forwards. It's like eventually the pendulum swings back and you get somebody like Tage Thompson. Like, I think that's kind of what we're getting here with with the physicality in the game is they spent so long trying to get rid of it that, like you said, it is still in the rules and in the game. They haven't gotten rid of it yet. So anytime somebody tr does come in and take advantage of it, they become a huge asset to a team. And they're like, oh, shit, like this guy is is now, you know, kind of one of a kind. So I think, so, like you said, some of these young guys are seeing it as an opportunity to to force their way into a lineup that they might not otherwise be in. Because, I mean, look, Jack Eye's been been up and down to Laval all season. It's not like he's every night in uh, in Montreal with the lineup. So, but, but it, um, it's still getting there. I was I was thinking, too, that, uh, what is it, these, these – we, we're seeing a lot of, like, violence recently, right? But we, we have to remember, this is also the era of, like – of like the Michigan goal, like happening every other day. Right. So it's just like, it's, you, you, you know, people, people will complain about one thing, like they want skill. People will complain about fighting or they don't have enough fighting, but it's like, we're getting a hell of a lot now for, you know, bang for your buck. Like, you know, I, I'm, we've all been the past 10 years, especially, but we've all been complaining about not enough fighting or not enough this, not enough. We're getting skill and WWE on a daily basis. Like this is like, we're true. You know, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is the most spoiled you will ever be in the NHL. At this yeah. Like honestly. I, when was the last time you saw a five on five fight? Uh, it's been quite a while. Yeah. Long enough that they changed the rules since the last time it happened, I believe. The fact that <laughs> eight players were ejected immediately. Um, How do you even finish a game? I didn't right? check all the rest of that. It's like rec hockey. Um, and for the people that were complaining that the coaches planned on it, like there is no way in hell Peter Laviolette planned on having a five on five brawl and put Jacob Druba out there for it. Yeah. Like if he was gonna do it, he'd put one of his lower defensemen. Not offense, yeah. no offense to his other defensemen, but Truba's one of his better ones. Like with what Darty was touching on, it's we're I think we're at a pretty good happy medium with regards to the physicality, the skill, the speed of the game. What I don't want to get back into is the stupid stage fights where you're having 100%. George LaRock and Colton Orr, Okay they got to get off the bench and they go and line up at the face off and, and, and they bear like they start pounding each other's face in. Cause it takes away from that. everything else. Yeah. If it's happening over the course of, of natural progression yeah. throughout the game, something happened and things get heated. Yeah. I, I want to see the passion from the players. So I just, the stage stuff needs to go. Yeah. To and that seems point, what like the pendulum, sorry. Um, it, we're like yeah. right in the middle in that sweet spot right now. Like Peter said, we don't want to go too far either way. This is a nice medium. It seems all the fighting that's been happening at Lee is, like you said, natural and part of the game. Not too much stage stuff. And let's hope it doesn't go back to it because, yeah, that was ruining everything. Yeah, and I feel like Rempe does kind of fall into that staged fight where it's like he's getting known for it so quick that whatever team he goes up against who has somebody who fights, it's like, oh, are they going to put them out at the same time? It's like it's kind of happened with Ryan Reeves, too, where, you know, everyone we've gone up against who has that fighter, it's like, oh, let's send Reeves out there. Oh, how come yeah. Reeves is in the lineup tonight? It's like, well, yeah, I get it. But, like, it should be in response to something, not just because the guy's there. Yeah, well, there's a code for guys like that, too. They understand he's a rookie and they he wants to make a name for himself, so they're going to give him a couple chances the first time around. But I think at a certain point, they're not going to start doing it as willingly, especially like 
you know, if they're losing in the game or whatever, but yeah. And if closer we get to playoffs and in playoffs, I think that's going to be less and less of a thing too. Yeah. I mean, look, especially with uh, the concussion protocols and stuff, like you get hit in the head with a punch. Like I just was saying with Tanner, you know, like you're, you're yeah. all of a sudden missing a game, whether you wanted to or not. So yeah. it's not as, uh, not as easy. Okay. Uh, quick thing before we skedaddle out of here. Um, I'm assuming you guys have seen this lovely image do, 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 of what the Phoenix um, slash Arizona Coyotes announced as what they want to buy. Did y'all see this? Yep. Yes. A little dumb. Um, they they it's can't obviously... pay their current rent, but they want to buy that. Yeah, so, I mean, not to sound like Dangle here for a sec, but their announcement to say, like, oh, we are actively going to pursue this, we are going to put in a serious offer, no shit, it's kind of the only thing you have left. Like, team bids on only available land for Arena. Congratulations, do you want a medal? Like, I don't understand <laughs> what is so fantastic about this. Like, like, if you don't get this, the team moves. So I don't get why it's so like, oh, look at this grand 3D rendering we did. That's great. But like, you kind of need to do this or you don't have a team. So I don't get that excited about it because it's like the fifth time you've announced you're doing something. And like Mitch Marner's injury, it's been like, we're days away from TPD on like what's going on with the coyotes like literally i feel like it was two months ago they were like yeah next week there's going to be an announcement and then now it's this and it's it, did you <sighs> did you see the report from sarah valley today so that's what oh, i was yeah. going to get to so the mayor <laughs> the scottsdale mayor blasts arizona coyotes arena plans in phoenix i'm assuming this is what you're talking about yeah so um this is a quote from him. The prospect of a rookie developer attempting to buy Arizona State Trust land with absolutely no infrastructure on the Phoenix side of Loop 101 and Scottsdale Road intersection at the doorstep of Scottsdale is not feasible or welcome, Ortega wrote. I admire the hockey sport. <laughs> Such a stupid phrase. I admire the hockey sport, Arizona Coyotes community involvement, and phenomenal youth clubs at Scottsdale Ice Den. But I, along with the city of Scottsdale staff, will continue to monitor any actions that occur and negative repercussions for Scottsdale. As it stands today, the, fa the fantasy hockey project must move west away from Scottsdale. So, again, <laughs> nope. Goodbye. What I'm, are I'm, we convinced, doing? I'm convinced that Gary Bettman, the NHL, they, they pay a lot of money to, to fund... Um, Instagram and Twitter bots because there are people out there like, you know, defending and like, we need, we need stadium here. Like hockey in Phoenix, hockey in Arizona, always be here. We're huge Arizona fans. Where the hell were you? What do you mean? I, I never like in the, in the nineties and two thousands, you know, I was, I was in Winnipeg for a, a short period of time. Like I don't, I never heard anybody like, like praise the, the jets as much as I see online, like with the, uh, like, oh my God, Arizona, I can't believe we're going to keep our hockey. We need hockey here. We need hockey here. Not, not in Quebec. We need hockey here. Bro, your mayor doesn't even want you to have hockey here. The previous organizations did not want you to have hockey there. You can't pay your rent. It's becoming perfectly clear that there's some sort of scam going on here that is necessary for Batman to put a team there to continue this scam because it, it just doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. You have all these fans clamoring for a team there, but if your own mayor and mayors, because there was multiple, what, what the last one was in Tempe or something, to, like, the, like, um, if your own, you know, political organizations won't even approve this, then it's very clear that there's not enough demand for hockey there, right? Because if you want to get elected and you and you want to put a brand new stadium in there, and you know that like how many people go to a stadium, like thousands, like at least fifty thousand people, you're gonna have fifty thousand new constituents voting for you, right? So why would you say no to a stadium if you have so 50,000 fans clamoring to get in? Guess what? Because you don't have 50,000 cl fans clamoring to get in. It doesn't exist. <laughs> so I just want to pull from Twitter here for a sec and shout out to Marty because uh, we got into a conversation with uh, at Leafs Blue 16 about this. So Leafs Blue asked, honest question, I get cities without a team rooting for them to fail and move, but why does Toronto need to root against them? I'm a Leafs fan first, but my second team is the Coyotes. I've never understood why fellow Leafs fans seem to bag on the Coyotes. So here's the response from Marty. We, Leafs fans, want the cap to go up. Our team has the most money and can spend far more than the cap will allow. Therefore, we want 
the fake restrictive hard cap to increase and the Coyotes are dragging NHL revenue down. This is the biggest thing. Like this team not filling seats, not paying their rent aside. The owners are livid that they are having to basically have this team on life support. Like it's, it's draining all of the revenue sharing across the league towards the Coyotes. And it's stopping them from being able to, as a league, increase the value and increase the salary cap because their their bottom team is like below AHL level as far as like their their revenues and and it's not the team's fault it's the ownership like it's the same thing we saw with the Atlanta Thrashers like they're trying to bring a team back there not because Atlanta failed as a hockey market it failed because the the ownership group didn't run the team properly and that's what we're seeing in Arizona like they they folded and and sold on this team left and right and kept giving away every player they drafted the only like a Jacob Chikrin is the longest they've held on to anybody until recently yeah. and they traded him anyway so it's like we've just like, been farming players and selling them off constantly the, the ownership in the city were never able to get together and just you know get in the same page and get something together since 2008 they've never averaged over 14,000 fans yikes that's well, a long they've time. been i think and it, i, I think the only like time was their playoff since then Maybe the playoffs. Yeah, I'm talking regular season. Yeah, they had that 2012 playoff run. (laughs) Yeah, and now his kids playing on the team. Like, it's crazy. Now they average 4,600 a year. And I just don't. I I don't understand what the what the persistence is with with Phoenix because, like, if I was like, is there something specific about Arizona that's like so special that I'm missing out, like tax wise or something? Because like TV market, like, but even even that, like, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't you move to somewhere else in Texas? Like, if you really want hockey in, like, you know, a hot place, go, like, there's how many, you know, Dallas Stars are doing great. Like, like if there's so, the population size is, is, I'm sure, outpaces Phoenix by a ton uh, in the state of Texas. I'm sure they could find one city to put a hockey team there that would work just as good as, as the, the Thrashers and, and Coyotes combined. If they really want a team that, you know, barely pulls any attendance. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I'm just trying to figure out like what is the persistence with with Phoenix? Like this is this is uh this is like um Batman's like Ozzy Mendias moment. Like he's just really like he just seems so proud about this damn team, but you look at it and it's just completely in shambles. Just look at the population of Scottsdale is two hundred and forty five thousand, but what is that like part of Phoenix? Yeah, because I think it's like part, it's like their it's like their GTA, you know, like their greater yeah greater metropolitan area. Okay, so Phoenix's population is one point six million. Austin, Texas, is like a million, which is like the size of Ottawa. So Phoenix is bigger. Like I get it. There's a lot of people there, but it's it's about the ownership well, group. And I feel like at a long time ago, I mean, they did it once, but they they should have taken this team away from this group or sold on it earlier instead of keeping them doing this forever because i mean we're here now but fuck man it's embarrassing yeah Freaking with embarrassing. regards to tech with Sorry. regards to texas the no it's good the stars already have that tv market covered um yeah. there is definitely appetite for another team in texas like houston, houston had a yeah. very successful team in the wha way back in the day the houston arrows were very successful um so there are a possibility, but it, it's that, that whole Sun Belt, like that whole market down in the southern states there. They, they've they gone into Georgia. They've gone into Texas. They've gone into Nevada. They want to keep that Arizona. San Antonio's and, one and a half and Houston's 2.3 million. Holy. I bet, yeah. another te- I bet if you put another team in Hartford, it would still pour, pull more fans than another team in Phoenix. <laughs> But Batman's not worried about the actual fans. He wants the TV money. That's the thing. And when you look, when you look at like the NBA, they're pretty well dispersed over the entire country. And yeah, Phoenix, to have the NHL. Go sorry, on. go ahead, Sally. I was just going to say, say like, to have the nice NHL, team. you want them. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> we want them more dispersed over more states, right? Sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. It's all good. I was going to say, like, Phoenix sits, it sits nicely between Las Vegas, L.A., and Dallas, and they really don't have anything in the middle there. So I'm sure they do want to keep that viewership. But with the ownership, like, it's oh man, it, it's so long. It's such a bad look at this point that like something has to get done one way or another. Look, after they got fined, after they lost draft picks, it's just it should have been it. Bless you. Bless you again.
Oh, three times. Oh, we got a we got a four. Oh, buddy, oh, you've never seen him sneeze. <laughs> He's looking for attention. Six. Yeah, it's, I've seen him Bro. be like ten. <laughs> it's I get like lightheaded. It sucks. <laughs> You guys, we're, we're talking about the TV money here, but okay, maybe this just comes from me being a Canadian fan and me just like for some reason not forking out money to every single thing that exists. But like we're talking about TV, TV, uh, TV money here. It's like uh, one of the barriers to entry right now for me for the first time in a while has been trying to find a game that isn't blacked out. I think that's something that needs to be rectified really freaking quick because wait till like, next year. I, I've, I've spent good gosh darn money more money than i've ever spent to watch more you know less hockey i mean it doesn't make sense like and i'll tell you right now if it doesn't make dollars as as the the saying goes it doesn't make sense and not every you know we're all we're all spending our money not just for you know as an individual here i'm not just spending my money to watch sports i'm you know i also have my money in other things like netflix disney plus any other various streaming apps and it's like I'm not going Amazon to spe- Prime soon I'm not to be going home to spend on the NHL. A billion freaking dollars to find the one game that I actually want to watch um, that is on a, a, a different streaming service, right? You know what I mean? Like, at some point, they need to make it like in the, 10 years ago, I could find a game. I could find the game I want. Yeah, every now and then there'd be a blacked out game, fine. But I could, it was very easy to, to watch a lease game. This past two years has been so fucking difficult to watch lease games that I've, I've done everything in my power to, you know, avoid paying extra streaming services because like it doesn't make sense right it doesn't make sense to to sign up for for one streaming service for one time just so you can watch one game that's been blocked out it does not make sense so they really got to sort that out because that's how that's how sports like you know boxing go go the way of the the dodo bird right like if your fans are not getting clean consistent access to your sport you're not going to be making money in the long run it's getting too so- confusing that's a good quick transition to close this out on. Uh, Amazon's picking up some games from Sportsnet next year, and that's going to be interesting because uh, those are going to be really easy to access. Obviously, it doesn't get rid of blackouts. The regional blackouts are not in Rogers or Bell's or MLSE's hands. That's uh, the league itself, so Amazon can't get around that. But what I think is interesting is we heard that Amazon's doing all these um, documentaries, like docu-series on different players and teams and they how many players did it say they got to follow around but like it was it was like double digits it was like 14 or 17 players or something is it that much i think it was only like seven seven or was it uh, yeah i don't think it was even double digits amazon but my point is like they're they're obviously making a push to try to um pick this up as their as their next thing right like they they definitely want to yeah, it's uh, gonna be like Netflix's Amazon F1 Amazon. show, or they have the golf one now too, and tennis. Just follow them around for the season. Yeah, and they made a deal with Bali Sports. Ten um, NHL players. Ten of them. Okay, cool. So they made a deal with Bali Sports in January as well to pick up um, some games. So Amazon's definitely trying to push their way into that market, and honestly, it's been stale for a while. I don't hate a new player in that game. That has they've done it with compete. Raptors games and other sporting events too, just uh, not so much with hockey yet. Well, they got to make it easier to watch the games, right? Because the harder you make it, the more convoluted you make it, the the less. Like I said, I've missed games because it has it has not been <clears throat> easy to watch them, right? Yeah, agreed. But, but I think like if you already have Amazon, I think you have to subscribe to something else too to watch these sporting games. Yes, uh, <laughs> that's like it's not why... just your membership alone. Oh my god! Okay. <laughs> That's that's what it's like with Apple TV as well. Um, yeah, like if thing. you want to watch MLS games, you have to sub- you have to have Apple TV and you have to subscribe to the MLS season pass. It's never that yeah. simple. There that's what is. my brain sounds like every time I'm like about to, I'm like I'm gonna watch this game. Then it's blacked out, and then I go to go on a different streaming service and subscribe to a service within that service. To hey. watch that fucking game. <laughs> but you know Drive what? Tonight's nuts. wasn't blacked out. At least not here. Why doesn't NHL.com just give you an option to pay X amount of money for your team and you can always get it no matter what? Yeah. Have a centralized. I don't thing. understand this. Like, did, did Napster not set the model for this? Like, if you don't make something available, people will just steal it. Like, yeah. Just and then, like, make the, the biggest thing is they available. want TV viewers. They want TV viewers. And, like, to everyone's point here, they just make it so fucking hard to watch these games. 
So why not up your price a little bit and have one spot where you can tap into whatever channel you need to. To bring this all together, if this is about TV deals, the Arizona Coyotes are dragging the value of said TV deal down, even if they are in that market. Having a better team there or a better team anywhere is going yes. to drive the value of the entire league up. A thousand and percent. then you can, in a couple of years, bring a team back to Arizona if you need to cover that geographic area. Keeping this thing alive on life support is not working. Okay. Yeah. You get rid of that, you bring the league up, you get rid of blackouts, you make things more easily accessible. Everyone's watching it. That also brings the value of the TV deal up because guess what? You can say instead of like 500 million people are watching, you can say, oh, 2.3 billion people tuned in because we made it way easier to watch. And that's way more advertisers. That's way more money. Like it's, it all goes hand in hand. Stop being stupid and stop making me sound like I'm coming up with <laughs> rocket science here for how you run a fucking league. Okay, yeah, cool. let's get out of here. Steady league. Billion. <laughs> Love let's that go to Utah, so let's much. go to Kansas City, Portland, anywhere. It, those teams will, like, those cities will make it work. And then come back later. You know, bring a team back to Arizona when the right owner is, or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sure they have coyotes in Utah. You can just leave it with the same name, like. Or the Mormons, you know, you know, whatever. The thing that I would be sad to see leave is the logo. Yeah, like the Kachina is so cool. They have one of the cooler like jerseys and logos, and they've done absolutely dick all of it. <laughs> oh, whatever team they or city they move to, they can use it as a retro jersey. There you go. They have right. options. They could use a retro Jets. They could use a retro Coyote. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! True. How deep do we want to dig? Okay, we gotta get out of here. I gotta work in the morning. <laughs> so. Bye. Peace out, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Find us on all the platforms. Give us a follow. Give us a like and subscribe and rate and all of that. It's on YouTube as well. Um, Until next time, I guess. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Leafs Late Night, your night of post-game podcast. Available after every game on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible, and more. Have you guys tried this shit yet? What are you oh, wearing, David? What are you doing? <laughs>